Are you still with me? As version 1.1 wraps up, I wanted to take a moment to reflect on and rate my overall experience with the content provided. We will rate everything I experienced in version 1.1 on a scale of 1 to 5, with 1 being the lowest and 5 being the highest. By the end, the scores will be tallied to give an overall impression of this version. Of course, the scores here are just my opinion, so don't let it bother you if I enjoyed something you didn't. If you agree or disagree with something I end up saying here, you are free to voice your opinions in the comments below. Starting things off with a bang. I think we can all agree the highlight of 1.1 for many players was the two new resonators, Jinsi and Chengli. Jinsi is an absolute powerhouse who relies greatly on her teammates to generate incandescent stacks, which she can in turn use to nuke her foes into oblivion. This character is the type of character other games would release as their anniversary character, so to get someone like her this early on means we are in for a treat down the line. Changli is the counselor to Magistrate Jinsi and is just as elegant. She is definitely one of my favorite characters so far, just because of how easy it is to run through overworld activities with her. She plays very similar to Jinsi minus the extreme dependent on her allies. You generate four stacks of inflamement via your basic attacks and skill, consume them for flaming sacrifice, cast her liberation to nuke the field, which in turn grants four more stacks so you can set the world ablaze once more. Both Jinchi and Changli gets a five out of five. Our next point of interest is the stories that came with the two new resonators. The campaign surrounding Jinsi focuses on her search for Sentinel Ju Wei. This campaign was a master class in cinematics with breathtaking cutscenes at every turn. However, the writing wasn't as strong as it could have been. It felt like the journey ahead of you would have had some dire consequences for the characters involved. The characters are constantly reminding you of what's at stake should you fail, but in reality. This was more of a coming-of-age story where an overprotective parent tests her daughter to see if she will be capable of doing what needs to be done when the time comes. Although there is nothing wrong with that narrative, the writing here just didn't do it justice. Just to clarify, I don't think the writing is completely awful. I would say it's about 10% off. Things are being presented in strange orders, how characters' response to certain dialogue feels unnatural, and any sense of mystery is immediately resolved with the most basic form of explanation. Those are the issues I have with it. Also, what exactly would have happened had the Arbiter not been present? Did Jinsi even unlock her second awakening? Could Ju Wei have transferred the temporal mandate to her without the Arbiter's permission? I guess we'll have to tune in next time on Dragon Ball Z to find out. Unfortunately, Changli's story kinda suffered from the same poor writing. Again though, the presentation was incredible. The fact that they actually went out of their way and made a model for Kid Changli instead of just using a short 2D cutscene, really shows how much work the devs are willing to put into their storytelling. Merging aspect of the past, present, and future into a nice, coherent story is definitely not an easy thing to do, but I think you could have had a much better story using the content provided here. Just rearrange in a better order. Anyway, the overall presentation was great. The writing team is still slacking though, so we'll give the story a 3.5 out of 5. The world and the scenes being shown to us look so amazing and profound, but the story attached to them, or at least the way that story is being delivered, is basic to say the least. We can't really talk about the story without mentioning the new map. When this was first showcased, I saw a lot of comments comparing it to Dragonspine from that one Genshin game whose name I've already forgotten. Although I can see the similarities, Mount Firmament is much more beautiful. Strangely enough though, I feel like Dragon Spine had more mysteries. Fun fact, the Dragon Spine update is actually my favorite updates from Genshin Impact. We did get a few new echoes with the new map, but let's be real, no one is gonna be using them. Not because we wouldn't want to, but because the game only incentivize using boss echoes. That being said though, five out of five map. I really hope it doesn't just become one of those areas we never visit again. Hopefully they can find a way to keep old areas relevant in future updates. Moving on to events, starting with Depths of Elusive Realm. I am not too crazy about this game mode. I do think it's a fun party mode, but it can take a bit too long to complete a session. I can usually get maybe two full clears in before starting to get sleepy. I did have my fair share of fun with it, but its replayability is definitely something they can work on improving. Four out of five. Gift of Celestial Lights was a slap on the face. How dare they give us free stuff? Shame on them, shame. I'm joking, of course. 5 out of 5. Oh man. Gift of Gratitude was legendary. 5 out of 5 for sure. 
Oh shoot, I mean. Man, they must be doing really bad to be giving their player base this much free stuff. 100% dead game. Tales from Mount Firmament was a pretty nice way to bait players into exploring the new map. Anyone else got absolutely massacred by that freaking tiger? I just gave up, man. I got bills. That's a 5 out of 5 beatdown for sure. Trace of Mount Firmament was a photo base event. I wasn't too into this one, but I do think it was a good way to get players to go out there and explore. I'll give this one a 4 out of 5. Speaking of beatdowns, I got owned by the new tactical hologram Crownless as well. But it looks like most people were enjoying it. But I'm gonna give it a 3 out of 5. The low rating is not for the fight itself. It's because we can't just restart the fight in the ring. They spawn us 50 mile away from the boss every time you want to retry and that annoys me to no end. Tactical Simulacra was actually not too bad. I think a permanent boss rush mode could be pretty interesting. 5 out of 5. Lalo campaign was very rewarding and easy to complete. 5 out of 5. Of course, there were other mini events like the double reward stuff, which were definitely welcome. I think a lot of players have reached the point where resources are becoming a bit too scarce. So five out of five for those events. When we tally everything up, version 1.1 scores a 4.5 out of five. The characters and map design are top notch with a little room for improvement in the storytelling. Events are well received, albeit with some minor annoyances. Overall, this version was a banger with a lot to enjoy. And look, I know some of you will think the rating is a bit too high. And strangely enough, I kind of feel the same way. But I think the reason for that might be the fact that the patch felt extremely long. I am not saying nor implying we need shorter patch cycles, but it's gonna take some getting used to. So what do you guys think about my conclusion? Agree or disagree?